on a satellite map in a research lab in Chengdu. The Dadu River Valley is speckled with 143 red dots. Each dot represents a hidden landslide spot, a massive, dormant slope of unstable rock waiting for a trigger. On November 11, 2025, one of those dots turned into a cloud of dust, taking the newly built Hongqi Superbridge down with it. The collapse of the bridge in the clouds less than 10 months after its completion is not just an engineering embarrassment, it is a geological siren. Situated in the shadow of the Shuangjiang Kao hydropower station, which boasts the world's tallest dam at 312 meters, the bridge was the first casualty of a massive hydrological experiment. The official narrative calls it an unpredictable natural disaster, but the data tells a different story. We now know that the region was mapped by INSAR satellites years ago, revealing dozens of ancient landslide groups lining the reservoir room. We know that the dam's massive 80-meter water level fluctuation was predicted to destabilize these exact slopes. And we know, based on the precedent of the deadly Qianjiang Ping disaster, that the time hysteresis of groundwater infiltration meant a collapse was not a matter of if, but when. As 900 workers sit trapped in the valley, and the reservoir continues to fill, a terrifying question hangs over the Dadu River. If a state-of-the-art superbridge couldn't survive the first six months of the world's tallest dam, what happens when the other 142 red dots wake up? Part 1. The skin of the mountain is peeling. The disaster did not strike without warning. According to local reports obtained by the Epoch Times and analysis of pre-collapse footage, the mountain gave a clear, audible signal of its distress 24 hours before the bridge fell. At approximately noon on November 10, patrol personnel on National Highway 317 noticed significant anomalies. In this clip, cracks in the pavement had begun to tear through the roadway of the bridge's right bank head, a classic indicator of deep-seated slope movement. But it was the sound that terrified the locals. Residents reported hearing the mountain groaning, describing the noise as crashing and a clattering sound. One local told reporters, the skin of this mountain is about to collapse, it is making crashing sounds. Authorities moved to seal the road, a decision that undoubtedly prevented a mass casualty event on a route that serves as a vital artery connecting Barkham, Jinjuan, and Rangtang. However, while the traffic was stopped, the geological momentum was irreversible. At 4 p.m. the following day, the mountainside gave way. Video footage circulating on social media captures the terrifying scale of the event. Dust and debris were visible blowing around well above the bridge moments before the main failure, indicating the slide started high up the slope. A massive volume of rock and soil then cascaded down, striking the bridge piers with overwhelming dynamic force. The deck snapped like matchsticks, and the entire structure plunged into the Zumuzu River, a tributary of the Dadu, sending a mushroom cloud of dust and debris hundreds of feet into the air. The bridge is a road we take every day. Fortunately, it was discovered early, and we escaped disaster, said a worker responsible for installing power generation equipment at the nearby hydropower station. However, while commuters escaped, the economic and human toll on the workforce has been severe. The collapse has severed the only exit route for the construction zone, trapping between 800 and 900 workers in the valley. Cars can't get out, we can only wait. Work has stopped, the worker told the Epoch Times, adding a grim note on the labor conditions that plagues the project. I have been here for two months and haven't received my wages yet. Part 2. A foundation built on loose ground. To the untrained eye, the collapse appeared to be a tragic but random natural disaster a landslide overwhelming a bridge. However, to Dr. Zhu Shui Ye, a US-based senior bridge structure design engineer, the footage revealed a fundamental error in site selection that borders on professional negligence. From the limited pictures and the video, the accident is first a landslide, and then the bridge fell down. This order is very important, Dr. Zhu explained. Dr. Zhu's analysis points to a fatal flaw. The bridge's approach was not built on solid bedrock but on what geologists call a deposit body. In simple terms, the bridge was anchored into a loose, unstable pile of rocks and soil left behind by ancient landslides. That small hill is obviously a deposit body, and the slope is very steep, approximately between 45 and 60 degrees, Zhu noted. The Geological Trap, Ancient Landslide Groups 
The danger of building on this specific type of terrain in the Dadu River Basin is well documented. The region is defined by its alpine canyon landform, where the river cuts deeply into the mountains, creating steep, unstable banks. According to a 2023 study published in the journal Census, the Gadu River Basin is littered with ancient landslide groups. These are massive, dormant piles of debris from landslides that happened centuries or millennia ago. To a surveyor, they might look like normal hills, but they are structurally weak. The study notes that these hidden spots are characterized by high concealment, making them difficult to detect with the naked eye. However, they are highly susceptible to reactivation. When engineers cut into the toe of such a slope to build a bridge foundation, or when the water level rises, the dormant deposit body wakes up and slides. Dr. Zhu observed that while the connection between the main bridge and the approach was torn apart, the main bridge structure which was likely anchored deeper in the riverbed remained relatively stable. From this point of view, it does not look like a construction or design problem of the bridge itself, he said. The bridge didn't fail, the ground it stood on did. Engineering Blindness, a bridge versus a moving mountain Casey Jones, a professional engineer and civil engineering analyst, reinforced this view in a technical briefing following the disaster. He noted that the bridge's design seemed completely disconnected from the reality of its environment. This could not be expected to be designed to withstand the impact of a bunch of slide debris, soil and rock coming off the slopes, Jones explained. Jones used a clear distinction to explain the failure. Bridges are designed to hold static weight, gravity pulling down from cars and trucks. They are not designed to withstand dynamic impact, the horizontal force of thousands of tons of rock crashing into the piers like a freight train. The failure of detection. The tragedy is that this instability was detectable. The same 2023 study, led by researchers Hui Bao Huan and Xu Jun Zhu from Sichuan University and the state key laboratory of geohazard prevention, used in SAR satellite radar technology to scan the Dadu River from Jinchuan to Erbian. Their findings were alarming. They identified 143 potential landslide regions spread over an 800km stretch of the river. They warned that ancient landslide groups along the Dadu River have a high probability of sliding. They specifically noted that massive exploitation of hydroelectric resources has promoted the occurrence of deep-seated landslides. It's not clear if they had implemented any methodologies to stabilize the slope near this Hongqi bridge. Jones noted, reviewing construction photos that showed a largely untreated, steep slope. The science existed to see this disaster coming. The satellite data was available. The fact that the bridge was built on an active, ancient landslide, without adequate stabilization, suggests a catastrophic failure to heed the geological warnings. Part 3. The Invisible Hand of the World's Tallest Dam While the unstable geology provided the ammunition for the collapse, the trigger appears to be man-made. The Hongqi Superbridge sits immediately upstream of the Xuanjiangkao Hydropower Station, a massive infrastructure project that boasts a dam standing 312 meters, 1,024 feet tall the highest in the world. The dam began impounding water on May 1, 2025. By November, the reservoir was in its critical initial filling phase. The worker on the scene provided a crucial piece of forensic evidence to the Epoch Times. The reason for the bridge collapse is the water level of the reservoir rising. The mountain body was soaked by water, making the soil layer soft. To understand why the bridge collapsed six months after the dam began filling, we must look to the most studied reservoir disaster in modern Chinese history, the Qianjiangping landslide. In July 2003, shortly after the Three Gorges Reservoir raised its water level from 105 meters to 135 meters for the first time, a massive block of earth 24 million cubic meters slid into the Qinggan River, killing 24 people, 129 houses. Research published in Environmental Earth Sciences by Dr. Wen Xingjian and Professor Chang Wu analyzed this exact failure mechanism. Their findings provide a chilling blueprint for the Hongqi Bridge collapse. Mechanism 1. The Time Hysteresis Effect Jian and Xu's research revealed that landslides often do not occur immediately when the water rises. They identified a time hysteresis effect. Because the hydraulic conductivity of the slope rock is low, it takes time for the reservoir water to infiltrate deep into the mountain. 
The groundwater tables rose with a time hysteresis effect, the study notes. In the case of Hongqi Bridge, the reservoir began filling in May. It likely took months for the high-pressure water to permeate the deep previous surface of rupture the old landslide scar. By November, the internal pressure had finally reached a critical tipping point, turning the clay layers into a lubricant. Mechanism 2. Retrogressive Failure The eyewitness accounts of the Hongqi collapse describe the bottom of the slope giving way, followed by the bridge above. This aligns perfectly with Jian and Xu's simulation of reservoir-induced slides. Their study describes a retrogressive failure mode. 1. Toe erosion. As the water level rises, the co of the slope is submerged. The water reduces the shear strength of the soil at the bottom and increases uplift pressure. 2. The pull. The bottom of the slope fails first retrogressive. 3. The collapse. Once the support at the toe is gone, the upper part of the slope loses its footing and slides down progressive. The 80-meter danger zone. The Xuanjiang Kao Dam is designed with a staggering 80-meter vertical fluctuation in water levels. Normal pool level 2,500 meters to dead water level 2,420 meters. This is nearly double the fluctuation range of the Three Gorges Dam. Casey Jones highlights this as a critical danger zone. He explained, if you think of a dam impounding water, and then that water level fluctuates, you can cause instability of the soaps all along the reservoir rim. The Jian and Xu study confirms that the initial impoundment period is the most dangerous time for a reservoir. The sudden introduction of water into dry, fractured rock creates a shock to the geological system. When combined with rainfall, which the study notes acts as the final trigger by saturating the surface, the slope is attacked from both above rain and below reservoir water. They've got bigger problems here than just replacing the bridge, Jones warned. The Hongqi Bridge collapse suggests that the time hysteresis clock has run out and the slopes along the Xuanjiangkao Reservoir are now waking up. Part 4. Political Paiban, Engineering by Decree If the geological risks of building on a steep dip slope upstream of a mega dam were so apparent to outside experts, why did the project proceed? Dr. Zhu Shuiye attributes the failure to the systemic corruption and political interference inherent in the Chinese Communist Party's approach to infrastructure. In China, engineering decisions are often overridden by political payaban, a term referring to leaders making final decisions based on political expediency rather than technical data. We now have evidence that the project was being pushed at a breakneck pace the prioritized records over safety. According to Fan Shao, a renowned Chinese geologist and environmentalist, the Xuanjiang Kao Reservoir was being filled at a rate that defied geological caution. In an analysis published by Probe International just days after the collapse, Fan revealed that between April and October 2025, the water level was raised by 160 meters in just seven months. This set world records for both the rate and magnitude of rise, Fan wrote. He noted that this aggressive schedule was driven by the pursuit of power generation and other interests creating a scenario where the geological safety of the reservoir region was sacrificed for speed. The government cannot claim they were blindsided. Fan Xiao's report exposes a critical failure in the monitoring system. He notes that early warning signs such as rockfalls had already appeared on the right bank in the first half of 2025. Despite these visible distress signals, the potential landslide body was seemingly excluded from the official hazard investigation scope. The failure to include this potential landslide body within the scope of geological hazard investigation is a clear shortcoming, Fan stated. Dr. Zhu's assessment aligns perfectly with Fan's findings. This is not a technical problem, but a political one, Zhu asserted. It is not a question of whether it can be done, but whether it should be done. Fan Xiao explicitly questioned the logic of the route itself noting that the bridge was sited directly atop this potential landslide body on a slope that was more unstable than the site of the old bridge. Dr. Zhu argues that such decisions are often driven by political achievement deadlines. Anyone without an engineering background can see that this small hill is prone to landslides, yet they actually built the approach bridge on such a slope. This plan is baffling, Zhu said. The corruption and negligence likely extended into the construction phase. Fan Xiao observed that the bridge piers on the right bank were not deeply excavated and were partially hanging, with no slope protection works in place. Dr. Zhu echoed this, contrasting it with international standards, 
where foundations would be driven deep into the valley floor. But this Hongqi bridge hugs the top of the mountain. This approach is like child's play. In the end, the collapse was not an accident. It was the calculated cost of a system that treats engineering limits as political obstacles to be overcome. Part 5. A Region on the Brink The collapse of the Hongqi Superbridge is more than a localized infrastructure failure. It is a warning sign for the entire region. The Long Men Shan Fault Zone is historically seismically active, and the introduction of the massive Xuanjankar Reservoir has introduced a new variable of instability. Casey Jones warns that the rapid drawdown risks will persist as long as the dam operates. We can see that with hydropower projects such as Three Gorges Dam, they operate the reservoir in a rather dramatic fashion. It's up, down, up, down, Jones noted. Every cycle of rising and falling water weakens the slopes further. For the 900 workers trapped in the valley, the immediate crisis is logistical. But for the millions living downstream of the Xuanjiang Kao Dam, the bridge collapse represents a terrifying proof of concept. The earth around the reservoir is moving. It appears that the government of China is motivated to do bigger and bigger projects, but may have not fully taken into account its environmental setting, Jones concluded. Dr. Zhu's assessment is even more damning. He views the bridge as a symptom of a rotting system, comparable to the issues plaguing the Three Gorges and San Mensha projects, Zhu said. These are all political problems. They are problems caused by the Communist Party corroding the entire society. As the dust settles on the ruins of the Hongqi Superbridge, the question remains, was this a singular tragedy or the first domino in a catastrophe of biblical proportions? With the world's tallest dam holding back billions of cubic meters of water just downstream, the cost of political engineering may soon be measured not in broken concrete, but in human lives.